Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Monorant Aggro, updated with a recent Explorer Anthology expansion as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, which added four copies of Eidolon of the Great Revel to the archetype, a 2-mana 2-2 two -two enchantment creature spirit, saying whenever a player casts a spell with mana value 3 or less, Eidolon deals 2 damage to that player. So it is a symmetrical effect, but as we're usually the aggressor in the matchup, it's gonna heavily favor us to have the Eidolon out, especially for on the play and get to be on the front foot, then the opponent's going to struggle to recover unless they manage to deal with Eidolon, and there's quite a few decks out there without removal in the main deck. And then going over the rest of our deck, of course we've got some nice aggressive one-drops, including the recent Monastery Swisspear added in the Brother's War, another 1-2 creature with prowess, this one has haste, Soulscar Mage has the additional ability of maybe shrinking down opposing creatures, as our burn spells turn into minus 1-1 minus one counters, can be very useful at shrinking down some large creatures from the Mono Green Devotion deck, for instance. And then we also have four copies of Kumano, a great way to enable prowess for our various one drops, as well as deal extra damage and maybe provide a plus one counter, eventually turns into a 2 2 creature itself. And then other creatures include our four copies of Bone Crusher Giant, where we can first use the Adventure to deal two damage to any target, and then a 4 3 afterwards. And then a two copies of a Goblin Chain Whirler, a 3 3 with first strike. When it enters, it deals one damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control, so shines at taking out a bunch of one toughness elves from the various green decks, but also a great creature to have on defense in other creature matchups. And then we've got two copies of Torbran, which is an awesome curve topper in a red deck, especially alongside Chain Whirler, as now if a red source we control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. So now our Chain Whirler will deal three damage to each creature and planeswalker the opponent controls, as well as to their face. And with the Torbran in play, now Eidolon deals 4 damage to the opponent while still only dealing 2 damage to us, so that's another great synergy. And of course Torbran also powers up our burn spells, and we've got a ton of them between our Bone Crusher Giants, at 1 mana there's Play with Fire, and then we've got two copies of Spikefield Hazard, can be played as a tap land or as a burn spell dealing one damage, exiling the creature in the process, so useful at killing an elf early on, but sometimes we have a hand that has a few expensive cards and then we're happy to have an extra land available. And then at two mana we've got a full set of Lightning Strike to deal three damage at instant speed, then I've also got a one-off Chandra Dress to Kill, useful if there's a bit of a board stall as a source of card advantage. Can maybe play Chandra, use the plus one ability adding red mana, and still cast another one drop afterwards. So another great way to potentially enable prowess a few times in the same turn. And then we also have the full set of Light Up the Stage as our source of card advantage. Can use the Spectacle mode for just a single red if we deal damage to the opponent, and then exile the top two cards that we can play until the end of our next turn. So typically want to Light Up the Stage before playing a land for the turn in case we exile two lands with it, and it's typically also better to wait on Light Up the Stage for as long as possible, that way we have more lands in play and we're more likely to cast both cards from exile before they go away, especially if we exile some expensive three or four mana cards. And then our mana base has a few goodies, including four copies of Den of the Bugbear as a great creature land, especially useful if we're in a racing situation and have our own Eidolon of the Great Revel in play, that way we can still deal extra damage without triggering our own Eidolon. We've got a Castle Embereth as another mana sink to increase our creature's power until end of turn, and then four copies of Ramana Runes can be sacrificed to deal two damage to each opponent. Now this is a colorless source as a land, so it does not deal four damage with Torbran, it's important to keep that in mind. And then we also have a Crucible that can be channeled to maybe make two hasty 1-1s, one -ones. although once again these are colorless, so they don't synergize all too well with Torbran. Another nombo to point out is if you have a Soulscar Mage and a Torbran in play, now you have to watch out because if you deal damage to opposing creatures, it will be dealt in the form of minus one, minus one counters, so you do miss out on that two extra damage from Torbran, so just something to keep in mind. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Swift Spear, turn two, maybe Stomp, or we could light up the stage. Let's see what we're up against. Turn on Forests, and an Elvish Mystic we're happy to take out. Yeah, even with another Swift Spear. Don't want to give my opponent any extra mana here, since the Green Devotion deck has some powerful 3-drops, including a 4-4 Troll. That's pretty difficult for a Monorad to get past. 
and there's a haven for now. Okay, so we could play another Swiss Spear attack light up the stage for one mana, although we do waste some prowess triggers in the process. Could just play a Bone Crusher Giant for now, from exile, attack for one. If our opponent plays a troll next turn, we can try and attack into it with a lightning strike as well. I think that's going to be slightly better. And if they play Karn, we have plenty of creatures in play to apply pressure with. It's going to be a troll for now. Okay. So let's say we play another Swiss Spear attack with all. That's probably the move. And then probably going to have to lightning strike the troll after they block. And we'll take it from there. Could also stomp instead of lightning strike. But our opponent trades for giant. So we can let damage happen and then still light up the stage to keep hitting our land drops and maybe play an Eidolon afterwards. While their opponent could be casting some 5 drops already. Even some 6 drops. So let's light up. And there's land for Eidolon. Okay, hopefully no Storm the Festival here. Cavalier would also be pretty bad, although we can try and get past it with our burn spells. Best case scenario, our opponent still has a bunch of cheap cards in hand that trigger Eidolon. Cura is one of them. So that's essentially paid for itself since they have both enchantments on the forest. And then now a Cavalier. Okay, so we've got our work cut out for us. Opponent's still at 12. Cavalier could find Nykthos. And they did. Pinefield Hazard is one more spell we can play. So probably go face with everyone. Opponent may block Eidolon. Then what happens if I Lightning Strike, Hazard and play with Fire? That's six points of burn, three prowess triggers. So that's 14. So that would be lethal. So they may block a Swift Spear. And then we still have six burn, three prowess triggers. So that's 12. So I think we still have them here. Opponent blocks Swift Spear, so no need to go after Cavalier, we can just go upstairs. We'll take some damage off our own Eidolon, but that's fine. Okay, so that was pretty much the ideal start from the Mono Green Devotion deck, even killing the turn 1 Elf to prevent a turn 2 Troll but we still got it done. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Swift Spear, maybe turn to Eidolon. And then if we draw lands, we can cast Chain Warrior. If not, we still have some two mana burn spells. And if this is Mono Blue Spirits, resolving a turn to Eidolon is a huge deal. Because the Spirits deck is filled with cheap spells, which would trigger Eidolon. Spectral Sailor, one of them, so opponent's gonna play turn response, although could still die to a Chain Warlord. And then we want to use our burn spells to kill any lords pumping the opponent's team to try and outsize them on the ground. And their Supreme Phantom, which we're happy to take out. Could also attack and then use Chain Warlord to maybe finish it off, assuming they block Eidolon. Yeah, I don't hate that idea. If they block Swiss Spear, then I can still stomp the Phantom to keep Lightning Strike for later. So that's not a total waste. But a Chain Whirler would finish off Sailor and Supreme Phantom here. So our opponent's gonna take it. In which case, I think we just Lightning Strike the Phantom anyway. Make sure the opponent's creatures stay small enough. So we're ahead in the race. And we still have some nice leftovers. Den of the Bugbear, also a great mana sink if we don't want to take damage off our own Eidolon. Although, so is Faceless Haven. And opponent can't really afford to sit back on counter spells all that much. So, let's play a land first in case we need the extra mana to play around Spell Pierce. And then step once probably to attack. And then maybe light up the stage. We'll see. Opponent takes it. 
Light up the stage for one mana. Opponent's got a lofty denial. It's gonna cost them two life, and then now we can resolve Chain Warlord killing Spectral Sailor. And a 3 3 first strike. Great to attack past a 4 3 Faceless Haven. So, best they can do is maybe save the Sailor with a pump spell. So that dies, opponent is at 6, and Sailor is another 2 damage, so yeah, Eidolon definitely the MVP this game. Being on the play also a big deal against Mono Blue Spirits, otherwise they probably would have been able to counter Eidolon, and we've got a whole different game. Ascendant Spirits, one of the better cards if they can actually grow it, but our opponent's gonna go out to our own Eidolon here in style. Alright, GG, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a nice hand. Swiss Spear into maybe a turn to Eidolon. We've got a bit of removal as well. So let's see what we're facing. Opponent's green-white, so maybe an Angel life gain deck, which is a pretty tough matchup if our opponent gets to enable their synergies. And our burn spells may not always be enough to kill some of their four toughness angels. Eh, never mind, it looks like a Grease Fang deck instead. So we can hold two of our burn spells to kill a Grease Fang at instant speed. And in the meantime, we can apply a good bit of pressure. Cylon should be decent. Opponent may be setting up a Grizzly Salvage. And then I think I'm forced to hang on to my burn spells as opposed to playing Soul Scar Mage since our opponent could salvage Parhelion into the graveyard, and then Grease Fang would be very threatening on the following turn. But we can potentially kill a creature end of turn and still have two burn spells left. So there's a Grizzly Salvage. Opponent milled a Grease Fang. No vehicles, luckily. Stitcher Supplier is a decent chum blocker to buy them some time, but it will also deal damage with Eidolon. And then we could maybe stomp it end of turn. Keep the cheaper play with fire that's easier to keep up. And still no vehicles in the graveyard at least. So end of turn will stomp. Supplier mills three more cards, still no vehicle. And land means we can play Soul Scar Mage now at the very least. So, hit for three. Points at eight. So, if we don't need to kill a Grease Fang, we can probably kill them next turn. No end of turn Grizzly Salvage, so maybe an Asikas Chariot for four mana. Would be pretty decent since it dodges Eidolon and presents a couple blockers. Although we'll be able to kill a cat token end of turn. And then next turn still attack for a lethal I think. So Chariot doesn't do it. Another supplier. Opponent's at 6. Still no vehicle. And at this point we can probably burn them out. 3 mana left. So Grease Fang's not particularly threatening, and would put them to 4, at which point we have lethal. So yeah, Eidolon kind of putting the opponent into checkmate. Opponent's at 4, and now we have 4 points of burn in hand. But might as well get the prowess triggers during our turn, although if they would have 1 mana interaction, then they're still taking 2 more from Eidolon, so I don't think they have any outs. And our opponent explodes, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, our hands a little slow to get going perhaps, but I'll definitely keep. And then lead with a tapped hazards, so we'll skip turn one Soul Scar Mage, which is also a great combo with Chain Warlor, dealing one damage in the form of minus one, minus one counters now. And then we'll play a turn to Eidolon, opponent's probably gonna kill it, but at least it'll take some damage in the process. There's a stomp. 
So the red black midrange deck doesn't have a ton of one toughness creatures, so I'm okay playing a chain warlord here. As opposed to saving it to go with Soul Scar, since now we can maybe attack past the Bone Crusher, enable light up this stage, and keep digging. And then of course the one card we don't want to see in this matchup is Shieldred. So our opponent makes a blood token. They may have a fatal push in hand, but they can't quite enable revolt here. Unless they're willing to chum block. So let's attack first, and then we'll have to reevaluate, maybe go for a light up the stage. Opponent does chump, so they're planning to set up a uh, fatal push here. So that'll kill Chain Warlord. What do we want to do afterwards? Probably still line up the stage for three mana, then we can play Soul Scar Mage at the very least. And then can play in next turn. Okay, so not a great start here. Already low on threats, bonus still at 17, and we're running a low on action. Another stomp. And yeah, that's the type of card that's very good against us. So we'll just have to lightning strike the opponent's face so we don't waste it. I think that's still better than just playing a Bone Crusher Giant. And then if Shield Root shows up, we can double burn it at least, but not something we want to see. And yeah, there's Shield Root. So before we take any damage, we can. Take it out. But uh, yeah, now we're basically out of cards. And our opponent still has plenty of action, so the late game is going to favor them. Double Harvester. So... Attacking with a Den of the Bugbear doesn't seem great. Bone Crusher just dies to Harvester activation. So, yeah, at this point we need to top deck Torbrain pretty much and then hope to string together some more burn spells. Although it also involves Harvester being gone since that can take out Torbrain with three blood tokens in play. So that's one Harvester gone at least. And we'll see how quickly our opponent wants to turn the corner. Two cards in hand, so they could easily have another Fatal Push, which takes out Den for one mana. Bone Crusher. And our opponent passes. Okay, let's cast a three mana Light of the Stage. At least it's a two for one. Okay, there's Storbran and Bone Crusher. So we probably Stomp Harvester so they cannot take out Torbran with it, and then next turn I can play Torbran still. And we'll even have the mana to play a Bone Crusher afterwards, unless their opponent has a Fatal Push on their own Harvester to fizzle the adventure. But they can also sack a Blood Token to enable Revolt and then kill Giant afterwards. Opponent on tap, so they're happy with the cards in hand, which is concerning. Croxa. We're empty-handed, but they can almost escape it here. With the red source, they can. And a fable. Okay. Goblin Chain Warlord off the top would be an epic top deck, but uh, just a Den of the Bugbear instead, as Chain Warlord would have been able to deal 3 damage to everything. So, play Torbrain, and then... Do I want to trade Bone Crusher for Bone Crusher? Not especially. So... I guess we'll just play Torbran and pass. And then we can still hope to top deck a Chain Warlord with Torbran in play to take over the board. Ramana Prunes is a colorless source, so it does not deal extra damage with Torbran, only increases damage of red spells or permanence. But I don't count on Torbran sticking around for long. So opponent can at the very least make a 6 6 Croxa. So that's a pretty fast clock as well. Alright, Chain Warlor off the top is what we need. If this Shaman attacks, that implies Treasure Token, Enable Revolt, Fatal Push, Torbrain. But they don't have it, so... Alright, let's go. Chain Warlor, just a mountain. Okay, so... Can animate a Den of the Bugbear. 
can probably even animate both now. So I guess we'll uh, try that approach. So this would deal five damage. I guess we could also pump with Castle Embereth to make sure it actually trades for Croxa. Otherwise they can just eat it for free. So sure. Then attacks. They probably just trade for the Shaman token. Does a Bone Crusher giant attack? Just trades for Bone Crusher. I guess we'll just send then. And we can at least threaten the castle activation. Okay, opponent trades for Bone Crusher instead. So they want to hang on to the Shaman. So do I pump with castle now to get some extra damage off our token? Or do we play lane to keep Den as an extra blocker? So next turn they can animate their own creature lands as well, including a Menacing Hive. Uh, Crocs is going to deal 3 to us when it attacks. So I think I might actually need the extra blocker back. So a lot of damage happen. Play land and pass. And then end of turn I may activate Ramonap Ruins. Another Fable. So we can still hope to top deck a Chain Whirler as our opponent plays Bone Crusher. Yeah, pretty sure Chain Whirler would do it here. So let's sacrifice the Ramonap Ruins. That's two damage. And just another Den. Okay, so. Are we dead now? Opponent can copy Bone Crusher next turn, send the team. That's gonna hurt. I guess we can attack with Den and send in an extra token as well. And then we can still pump with Castle, or are we one mana short now? I guess we're one short now that we sacrificed Ramana Prunes, which may have been a mistake. So, how does that change the math? I guess we still hope our opponent plays passively so we can top deck a Chain Whirler and then take it from there. Just play tap land pass. Since, yeah, I'm gonna be one short of pumping with castle if I attack with den. And otherwise they can just eat with croxa. Which does not seem great for me. But our opponent keeps digging, so they must have found an answer by now. Thought is not the best in this spot. And alright, opponent finally found an answer to Torbrain. So now the top deck chain whirler is no longer as exciting. And a Trespasser is going to be a great way to stabilize as well. Well, we definitely survived longer than I expected to against Red Black. After they had a great start. Opponent can copy the Trespasser if they'd like. And are we dead to an all-out attack? It's probably going to be close. Opponent plays it safe. Just sends Bone Crusher and Trespasser. So now is there a sequence that can still get us out of this? Even a light up the stage into Torbrand plus Chain Whirler. Six, that would be a mana short of actually casting both. Maybe another reason not to sacrifice the Ramana Ruins. But uh, yeah, we're taking seven. So can't really think of a sequence that saves us here. Opponent at 12. I guess I'll chump Bone Crusher. And there's another Ramana Prunes. Okay, I think that does it. GG's. So there was a glimmer of hope for a few turns. But yeah, we're only playing a couple of Chain Warlords, so we're not guaranteed to find them. But yeah, it's nice to have that out at least alongside Torbrain. If there's a large board stall. And our opponent can cross the finish line. Double Glutton. Can probably just kill us by themselves. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Turn one, Swiss Spear. Turn two, we can stomp for maybe light up the stage. 
And then double chain roller to clean up any one toughness creatures. Opponent a red green, turn one swift spear as well. So happy to stomp that. The longer we can wait on lineup the stage, typically the better. Although there is the risk that we'll struggle to enable spectacle for it, although with double chain roller that should not be too much of an issue. Opponent could stomp back. And then we'll just play a chain roller. It's gonna be a Kumano instead. And a play with fire. Fair enough. Could also play a Bone Crusher instead of Chain Warler. But uh, let's go with a Goblin. 3-3 three, three first strike and maybe block any haste creature that the opponent tries to play. Especially with the extra counter from Kumano, they're incentivized to play a creature. And there's a Burning Tree. Two more mana for a Swift Spear. Okay, so they don't have any great attacks, and we can hit them back with the Chain Roller, and then probably go for a Light of the Stage, assuming they take the damage. Soulscar plus Eidolon, so let's play Soulscar first and then Eidolon. So we can punish any more cheap spells from the opponents, hopefully They'll be forced to take out Eidolon, take some damage in the process. And then we still have a Bone Crusher and Chain Warrior. Okay, aggressive attack. Do we want to trade for Etching? Opponent could have an Amber Cleave, which is something our deck doesn't have. So let's assume we put Eidolon in front of Etching. Opponent goes for Amber Cleave on Etching. Don't really have Lethal on the way back, because the Swiss Spear would also get plus one plus one from Prowess. I think we just take it and then see if they have the cleave. It's gonna be an Atarkas command instead, at least they still take some damage. So we're taking 10, even with another play with fire, we're not quite dead to the prowess trigger, but we do put our opponent on having another burn spell. Okay, so if we attack, we're hitting for 6. If I animate Den, then what happens? Opponent could kill Den, take 2 down to 6. And die to my creatures. If they take out Eidolon, then they still die. So yeah, I think we have them with a den activation here as opposed to trying to play out something else. Tank with all. So maybe they were better off killing Eidolon first with a play with fire and then going for a Tarkos command. Maybe that would have uh, changed things. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Opponent's got a Gigantha as companion, maybe a red-black sacrifice deck. Our hand's not perfect, but probably still a keep. Can play Hazard tapped, maybe still play turn one Kumano into Swiss Spear. And a Thought Seize we don't really mind seeing with this hand, although they could take Hazard to maybe try and mana screw us, but it does potentially point towards a sacrifice deck so far. Opponent takes Stomp. And yeah, turn one Kumano. Turn two Swiss Spear looks good. As opposed to making sure we can play Eidolon, which we can still do if we draw an untapped land. Alright, red black. And a Harvester. So if I play Swift Spirit, can trade for Harvester, which may be okay. Since Harvester can also kill Eidolon. Opponent accepts. And play a Tapland. Next turn we'll get our Etching. Can maybe enable Spectacle for line up the stage. Opponent may have their own Bone Crusher Giants. Just another Harvester. Okay. So, step one attack, and then if we connect a light of the stage, if we don't, I think I still like an Eidolon here over Chain Warler. Opponent may have some one toughness creatures we can take out. And I'm happy if they just 
trade a burn spell for it. Right, fatal push. Opponent takes two. And unlucky witness, we can now maybe kill with a chain whirler. Although I don't mind going Swiss Spear plus Eidolon here. Or maybe Swiss Spear attack. See if they take it, and then I can light up the stage plus Eidolon. Although our opponent's probably happy to jump given that they're missing land drops. But so be it. So we don't quite get our Chain Whirler value. Opponent find the lands they were looking for. But now if we draw lands, we also have a Chain Whirler to enable Spectacle for us. And a Fable. Opponent takes two. Okay, so I can play a land and then light up the stage. Enable Prowess for Swift Spear as well. That seems decent, probably better than just casting a 3-mana light up the stage here. And then a Chain Whirler on defense is also good for blocking the Shaman token. We'll take some damage off our own Eidolon. But that's the cost of doing business. And then next turn we've got to play with Fire at the ready. So do I want to trade Eidolon for their Shaman? Not necessarily, since we've got our opponent on the back foot. And we've got to play with Fire to maybe take it out. Don't need to worry about Shieldred, since our opponent's playing Gigantha as companion. But something like Mayhem Devil could be problematic. Opponent happy with their hand, so that's concerning. Should put an upkeep stop in case I want to play with Fire to Scry. There's a Mayhem Devil. Opponent's at 8. But the Chain Whirler holds off the Shaman. So, yeah, probably take our draw and then hope to find an answer to Mayhem Devil. Stomp, that does it. So, kill Mayhem Devil and then what if I attack with all? They can block Eidolon, take 6 down to 2 and then next turn Ramana Prunes will finish them off. That seems good. on trades. Now they could have some life gain with food tokens, but uh, I think this is still a fine play. Unlucky witness, step one. So if we don't see an oven here to sacrifice and make a food token, we should be in the clear to use Ramana Perunes. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn 1, probably Kumano into turn 2 Swiss Spear. And then we can decide if we want to play a tapped hazard or maybe keep it as a burn spell. With the Torbran in hand, I'm guessing we'll play it out as a tap land. Opponent with a Fervent Champion. So Red Aggro, perhaps a Cavalcade version instead. So now with a land of the top, I'm kind of liking Swift Spear into Hazard. Enable Prowess. And then we still have a Bone Crusher we can play in the meantime while we wait for a fourth land. And if we draw more spells outside of a second Torbrain, we can cast everything. Turn to Emissary. And Karizav. That one dodges Stomp. Although we can attack into it with our team, Bon probably trades Burning Tree for Etching. So maybe I'm better off just stomping Burning Tree, but then uh, Karizev still blocks Etching. So I guess we're fine with a trade, and then try and light up the stage second main. That seems fine. I should probably play my land out so I don't take unnecessary damage of Ramona Prunes while stomping. Bon takes it, so... In that case, probably still fine to stomp Burning Tree and then light up the stage. And there we go. So next turn we can play Torbrain, even if one of the lands will go to waste. 
Three mana Chain Warlord, pretty good on defense. Luckily, no one toughness creatures on our side. And Kari's F attacks. Okay, Kumana will deal additional damage with Torbrand out. Which is gonna swing this matchup. So for now, hang back. Next turn, can play Kumano, play Bonecrusher. Which will also enable Prowess. Opponent also doesn't have any great attacks. Okay, let's uh, play Kumano. Opponent does have 5 power first strike on defense, so we're not gonna be able to attack anytime soon. But I uh, would love to top deck my own Chain Warlord here with Torbrain out. Robber attacks. Finds a Chandra, that's pretty good. So we can take that out. And our opponent can leverage Chandra. This little candle's gonna set your world on fire. Play with fire. Deals 4 damage here, so we want to be careful not to play Soulscar Mage first, since then the 4 damage turns into 2 minus 1 minus 1 counters, so that's a pretty quirky interaction. So let's say we go face with everyone. How does our opponent block? They could try and double lock Torbrain, which will blow them out. So yeah, I think we're fine to do that. We also have Castle, which threatens to be activated. Their opponent's kind of forced to try and take out Torbrain, but it's not going to work out for them. Kill Chain Warlord, that's 4 damage. Torbrain survives and our opponent loses their entire board. And then now we can play Soul Square Mage without risking a disaster. Chandra finds Bone Crusher. Chain Warlord doesn't kill anything. Best they can do is finish off a Soul Scar Mage. And an all out attack will do it here. Awesome. So, yeah, we got to see our Mono Red deck in action. And uh, overall, definitely a deck that's very play draw dependent. If you're on the play, you can at least develop some threats while answering the opponent's board. Sometimes if you're on the draw, opponent plays a turn one elf, you're already faced with a decision. Do I take a turn off killing the elf, but then I don't get to develop my board? And then even if you do kill the elf, you'll eventually fall behind if the opponent manages to curve out. So the variance with playing this deck is pretty high, but especially if you're on the play, a turn to Eidolon can deal a ton of damage. So it seems like a great addition from the recent Explorer anthology. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.